Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to like a small fortress update. Not a whole lot of progress on the physical printer itself. I have to order some parts, some things like that, but I did want to make a Sunday video. I wanted to make an update video for people who are interested in fortress and go over kind of what I've been doing. So not a massive amount of work, but I have been kind of working out the triple Z. Um, so this is the Fortress CAD here, we can see in Fusion. So what I've been doing is I have mocked up the Prusa mini bed we can see here, kind of getting in it, getting it in its location. Um, I'll say this bed definitely is not meant to be used in this way. Um, the holes are not very uh, easy to use on a 2020 frame. It's not very easy to suspend this in the air, but I'm trying out, trying this out um, kind of this manner. This, this bed is relatively rigid. It's uh, like four millimeters thick, I think, um, PCB essentially. It's quite rigid. So I do think it can be just supported by the front screws here and then one rear screw. Um, I do think it will be rigid enough to, to do that. Um, the other way I was thinking about is uh, potentially putting like a 2020 um, extrusion underneath the bed. However, the problem with that is you won't have any adjustability with the bed leveling via like screws. So I actually plan on putting a like normal bed spring here with a a nut so that you can adjust the three corners because we have to remember that this triple lead screw it's not an independent Z all three of these lead screws that will be in here are synchronized via one belt so if you were building this printer and you had one of these uh, mounting points slightly lower when you actually locked in the belt on the bottom I want people to have the ability to just still fine tune these three points via like the paper method to make sure that the belt is nice and level. So I want the, the adjustability in here. So it's difficult to do a 2020 um, extrusion underneath this bed, unfortunately. So I'm going to try it this way. I, I honestly don't think there's going to be a whole lot of issues. The bed's relatively small. It's relatively stiff. I don't think there's gonna be any like flexing in the middle of the bed. And when you're 3D printing, the nozzle's not pressing down on the bed. So I don't foresee any issues, but again, uh, we're gonna try it and we're gonna see how it how it is. So I'm pretty much done with the uh, actual bed mount. I haven't mirrored this across to the right side yet, but this is kind of the idea. I'm going to bolt onto the MGN uh, 9 here. And then uh, this is a placeholder here. This is a um, old ham joint. So basically, if you don't know what an old ham joint is, very weird name, but essentially this is a three-piece coupler. And what it does is it allows your lead screw to actually move without moving the bed. So this decouples the lead screw from the bed if this is bent it won't translate into the bed moving around as the bed moves up and down. So these are a main component in my design is these anti-wobble old ham couplers. These can be found on AliExpress relatively cheap. I ordered a couple of them, they're on their way. And then of course we have the regular um, eight millimeter nut for the lead screw. Looks like these are gonna be 250 millimeter lead screws cause I do need the lead screw to go down into the bottom compartment here. And that's where we're going to be running the belt. So we'll move on to that in just a moment. One thing that I'm um, finding out here is if we remove the gantry here, you can see the Prusa Mini bed. There's not a whole lot of space right here. We have to remember that there is a 3D printed strain relief that is basically going to come out right to here and then the cable still has to come out. And if we look at this, there's not going to be room for that with the bed moving down below this 2020 at the back. So 
I was thinking of potentially one option is I could leave this 2020 where it is and I could rotate the Prusa mini bed so that the connector would be here. Um, that would give us more room and there's room underneath for the cable to actually go underneath the uh, 2020 because this 2020 does sit higher. So that is potentially an option. However, I think the better way is to actually move this 2020 back all the way so it's in the corner here. Now, this is going to limit the kind of electronics compartment space, which I think is okay. I, I don't really foresee any problems. So if we move this back, let's just say 25 millimeters here, we now have tons of room at the back to actually mount that. Of course, this linear rail is gonna have to move to the back here. I'll most likely keep my lead screw relatively close to the bed. I wanna support the bed as close as possible. So the lead screw would stay here. Another benefit of moving this 2020 extrusion to the back is you can see now I have room for my motor, my single Z motor. So I would be moving this 2020 to the back as well. Um, we should be able to move, do that as well here. Let's just move this back. Let's just do this for now. So now I have room for this Z motor. So this is the Z motor that's going to actually run all three of the, the pulleys underneath the, the panel here. So I think this makes the most sense. We will lose a little bit of depth here, but there should still be room here to mount your electronics in the back. So I, I think this is probably the best way to go about that. So that's, I, I'm thinking that's what I'm gonna do here for the rear Z. I'm gonna move this all the way back and just move the linear rail to the back and then I'll, I'll keep the lead screw, the rear lead screw, which is not here yet. I'm gonna keep it as close to the rear of the bed as I can because like, like I say, I don't want as much leverage on this part. So I'm gonna have the lead screw as close to the bed as I possibly can, so. And like I say, that does give us a bunch more room here for the Z motor. Obviously these panels need to be changed, but. So for the actual Z, this is what I'm thinking about here for the Z. So what I've done is I've actually made a additional kind of skirt component here. I'm torn with two different versions of this. So let's remove a couple things here just so we can make it a little bit clearer. Let's get rid of the 2020 extrusions. Let's get rid of the panels so we can see this clearer. So right now I have the foot component here. So if we go, I'll just to kind of see if I can highlight what we were seeing here. So these are the normal um, fortress feet. And then I actually have this add-on part here, which we can see is my lead screw, my 40 tooth pulley, and my two bearings, okay? Now, I'll talk a little bit about why I'm doing it this way. You have to have two bearings supporting the lower portion here, because if we think about how this belt is actually gonna be tensioned, it's gonna be pulling on the center of this pulley, which is gonna wanna tilt this lead screw if we don't have a bearing up top. I don't have any space to put a bearing up here. So I have to constrain the lead screw at the bottom with dual bearings. So that's why we have two bearings on the bottom. These I believe are quite inexpensive. I believe you get a, a 10 pack of these for like 10 or $15 and that's on Amazon. Should be even cheaper on AliExpress. So relatively inexpensive. This is a 40 tooth uh, pulley with an eight millimeter bore. So it will fit on an eight millimeter lead screw. And I'm capturing both bearings here. So like I say, this is right now, this is a separate component to the uh, foot. That means that there's going to be an M5 bolt here that attaches to the 2020 frame. So I'll bring up the 2020 frame here but then there's no way to get another M5 in the other side of this component here. So what I'm doing is I actually have some threaded inserts that will press into the foot right here and also right here. And then basically there'll be some M3 bolts that will go into the side 
you can see the holes here, and they will attach to this, these threaded inserts. Now, there's a downside to this. Obviously, this is a little bit janky. It would constrain it, and this would be nice and rigid. Um, basically, this upper bolt here that goes through would keep this nice and tight against the foot. Um, and then we have our M5 bolt up here that's going to bolt directly into the 2020. So the benefit of having two parts is you can print these out quicker, right? They're, they're separate components. We don't have a big, long foot here. The downside is they are not going to be as rigid and we have to have some threaded inserts here and basically some M3 bolts that are going to pass through one of these components. The other option, of course, is making this all one piece. So the foot and the bearing mount are all a singular piece. This would be stronger. However, it's gonna take longer to print. And if this print failed, so we would print it in this orientation, I don't think there's gonna, there's gonna be any supports needed. Um, I can remove the uh, bearing mount here so we can see things a little bit easier. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Um, but if we move some of, the, some of these components, there's gonna be no supports needed. We can print it flat like this, just like you would normally 3D print the foot. And I think it be, should be fine. My only concern is these holes here. Obviously I wanna 3D print these in this orientation so they're nice and clean and round, but there's really no way to do that. I thought about different ways of like cutting this up into different parts and then bolting them on. But again, this portion here is essentially supporting the bed. So I wanna make sure this is as stout as possible and very, very rigid. So I want this to be all a singular piece. Um, I think it's gonna be okay. I haven't printed this part yet, but I'm curious on your thoughts if, you would like to see this part as a singular foot component or two separate pieces and then have the threaded inserts. Um, that's kind of where I'm at right now with the Z. I'm pretty much happy with the uh, location and everything. Everything seems to be working out relatively well. Um, if we look at the bottom here, I'll add the panels just so we can visualize, visualize this a little bit more, but we're gonna have our belt basically run across here it's gonna run down to this bottom one. There's gonna be a idler right here and it's gonna loop around the belt and then come back to this. So we'll have some tensioning obviously in the bottom here, which I haven't done yet. That's kind of gonna be the final part. But I just wanted to ask everyone's thoughts on the you know, two piece foot. Obviously I need to print these out first to see if any, any of this makes sense, if the print looks good and all this is working. But I think this is nice and solid I think it will make a lot of sense. It looks nice and clean from the top. It's all below. Um, unfortunately, I don't think there's gonna be any room for a power supply on the bottom. I'll have to wait till my belts are run, but I don't see there, uh, there being the ability to run a the Meanwell power supply on the bottom, unfortunately. That's just one of the trade-offs of this. Um, so there's that. You're gonna to have to mount the power supply most likely on the upper portion here on the back. Um, or if someone wanted to run the power supply in the electronics compartment and then run the main board up on the back or the main board would potentially fit in the middle here with the power supply on the back. There's definitely options that I wouldn't really want the main board on the bottom just because I hate flipping printers over on their side to, to do work on them or whatever. but. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at uh, on this stage of Fortress. Like I say, I'm very close with uh, starting to order parts. I have to order some lead screws and I have to order one more linear rail and just like I say, the bearings and these pulleys, which I can get on Amazon. It should be relatively easy for me to get them to prototype this. Um, so yeah. Link your thoughts down below in the description. I'm very curious what people think about this uh, design here for the foot, if it should be all one piece or multiple parts like this. Um, obviously, for simplicity, it'd be nice for this to be all a single part, 
get rid of some threaded inserts and some M3, um, but increases print times. And if this print fails, it's a lot more t material wasted. So that'll do it for the Sunday update. Like I say, guys, not a huge amount of progress, but this kind of CAD takes time. And this is my very first triple Z with a synchronous belt on the bottom. I'm very excited to see this in motion. I think this bed is going to be very, very rigid and will not move in X and Y direction. I'm, I'm very excited to see that. I'm going to try some very neat ideas with these bed springs that I'll explain a little bit later, but that's my idea. Comment below. Uh, again, I really thank everyone for the Patreon support. We're really quickly approaching 8,000 subscribers, which is just incredible. Um, stay tuned for more. Like, share, and subscribe, and I'll catch you all next time.